it'll just give you a little insight, maybe a little chuckle because I'm an idiot and I did something really stupid and I don't know. Slide that whole outer part of the column up and off the shaft. There's just no information anywhere saying, hey, if you're updating, you know, all your power steering and power brakes stuff, do the power steering first. Well, I'm gonna be the first video to tell you, do your power steering first, <laughs> then do the power brakes. All right, thanks for stopping back by the shop. I'm Corey. This is Mad Rad Garage. Where I work on my own crap for fun. And I videotape it so you guys can see what's going on. And we're back on Moz Mad today. Took a little hiatus there. I was under the weather. Still not feeling the greatest, so. But we are gonna do what we can get done. We're gonna try at least. So today, job's gonna be get some stuff apart over here. Get that uh, steering column down. A lot of it's gotta be done under here. I got two bolts on the bottom of the car. We'll lift it up on the lift to, to get at that. I gotta take the steering wheel off because as I showed in previous videos, and if you haven't watched those, go and check them out. Um, the Tri-5 Chevys from the nut on the steering wheel all the way down to the gearbox is one piece and i should be able to slide that whole outer part of the column up and off the shaft if i do that then it'll just be the empty shaft set because then i have to go underneath and slowly lower um everything out some of my previous videos we talked about how I'm gonna have to use this shaft this is one of my brother's 55 no man so this all has to come off on mine shifter, all that stuff, get put onto this shaft. Because it's shorter, I should be able to fit this between the new steering box and the shaft. But we'll see. That's the problem. I think I need an extra two inches. That shaft is two inches shorter. So, that's what we're doing today. You know what, first thing, I'm probably gonna put the car up in the air and uh, get the two bolts. There's two bolts down there and also the shift linkage. And it'll be easier to get from underneath because I got to get those two bolts no matter what. The two bolts are basically this piece. They're on the outside of the firewall in the fire in the engine compartment. So these two bolts. See them? Those two bolts. That's what I'm getting out right now. All right, that's out. I think my best bet is to uh, lower it. And we'll see, it's only one nut on that that'll take that uh, shift linkage off of the uh, steering column, so. So for those of you guys that are new to the channel, just a little heads up. Um, yes, I have removed a steering column from a 55 Chevy before. This one, okay. That being said, I was able to cut the shaft in the vehicle, but none of this was there, okay? So it was really easy to get there, cut that, and then I just, a couple of bolts and the whole steering column came out. If I have to cut this, it's gonna be a last resort because, I mean, the steering box is junk. It needs to be completely rebuilt. It's got so much slop in it. That's why we're doing this. But I can't, with all the new brake lines and everything installed, there is very small window to get in there and cut it, okay? And out of curiosity, because it's killing me, I know they took these out at the factory, or at the dealership, if there was a problem. I've been told you can take it out and put it back in, in the car. So, just out of curiosity, I'm gonna take this a column apart and slide it off that steering shaft 
just for my own amusement and for my own knowledge that it can be done. You know, I, I make these videos to remind myself what I've done to each vehicle. Okay, I can go back to working on my brothers, my dad's. It was my dad's Nomad for 50 something years. My brother just bought it here a couple years ago and we finished doing a bunch of updates on it. For those of you who haven't known, check the channel out. Got a bunch of different videos on there, um, having done that. So, this vehicle, doing it a little different because it's mine, not an unlimited budget, I'm trying to keep it on the cheap. But my channel is just me videoing and photographing for my own memory later on down the line, like a photo album. Decided to do YouTube. I'm like, well, I'm already doing this. Let's take it a step further, show you guys some stuff. I'm not tutorialing. These ain't tutorials. This is just a guy working on stuff in his garage. Maybe you're working on stuff in your garage and you can look at what I'm doing and go, Oh, I can see behind there. I know you're gonna be yelling at the screen too, going, dude, 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 unhook that first and then drop that. Oh, hmm. but you wouldn't know that until I got this apart, see? So it's just me learning my way through the process and uh, hopefully getting it done. You can learn how not to do something or you can learn how to do something. Um, it'll just give you a little insight, maybe a little chuckle because I'm an idiot and I did something really stupid and uh, it happens. Enough rambling on about what the channel is. If you like that kind of content, I'm gonna do the old YouTube thing because we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers and you can help. Hit that subscribe button over there. Hit that like button. Comment in the comments if you've run into this stuff before, if you've done this stuff before, if if you just have a question because you're like, I have no idea what you're doing. Why, why'd you do that? I mean, whatever. Comment down below. Let's have a conversation about it. Okay, there's a trim piece I gotta take off and I unhook the there's a linkage between the dash that shows drive and park and all that, and the column, there's a linkage with a spring. I think there's a spring. Um, so I'm gonna have to look in that, try to show you as much as I can. The fun part, because I do not, and this is so weird. I got a balancer puller, I've got, I got a bunch of stuff, but I don't have a steering wheel puller. And the balancer puller didn't work on my brothers when I needed to get the steering wheel off. At, when we were all said and done, we put a new column in his because um, of Long story short, we did rack and pinion in his, different setup, couldn't use this column. So hopefully this one comes off easier because it's gotta come off in the car. But first things first, let's get the linkage unhooked from the column in the engine compartment. Ooh. Well, a little bit. I'll round it off. Nice to have a set of swivel head ratchets, wouldn't it? All right, excuse me, guys. I gotta get you. Kinda gotta get you out of there, cause you're in the way. Oh, and I dropped it. Ain't that a bitch? Yeah, I see it? I don't see it. It's probably on the floor, which is fine. That's a perfect spot for it. At least I can get it there. Yeah, it must have to the floor. Alright, well, I don't see anything else in our way to get that old column out. Um, this cover, I think, is just pressed in here with a couple of push springs. Oh. Oh, ah. Yep, see, it's coming. Just like that. I can polish that while it's out. And then this is that spring I was telling you about when you when you shift. See? Come this way. See when I shift and park to neutral. This is pulling this, which activates that. So I gotta disconnect this, not lose it. Get this off. I don't think this is I think this is screwed on. And then then we gotta pull this. So, spring, get this all off and get it all cleaned up and everything. 
I like to try to clean stuff up when I have them apart because it's easier to do and it's less messy and, it's, and I can use better equipment instead of just by hand. I like to freshen all this up if I can. We still got a couple of months before it's cool enough out to go cruising in this thing. Um, we're raining every day. I don't want to get caught in rain. I haven't hooked up the vacuum booster for the wipers. Yes, wipers are vacuum operated. I have no air conditioning. So with no air conditioning, a little bit hot, but we're, we'll test drive it once we get this all buttoned up because I will be dying to test drive it and to make sure we have no other issues. So when cruising season comes, I am ready. Because I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to drive this quite a bit this winter. Well, I'm heading there. And then I'll have to unplug that and that. And then back there on the end is the neutral safety switch. I don't think that is a freaking Allen. No, that one's too big or too small. Got a freaking stripped out Phillips. Yeah. It's going with the Phillips in there. Let's see what that's about. Yeah, I know I was supposed to take the linkage off first, but it's bugging me. I, I want to see what all I'm dealing with before I start taking delicate things apart. Okay. No problem. That's what I wanted to see. That's the bolts we're covering up. Okay. And those we drop. Disconnect that. Z at the bottom half with the top hook facing me and the bottom hook going to the left. That's for my, if I forget, that's for later. So I started doing videos to remember how to do stuff. Because in two days, it takes me a week to get back to this. I never remember. I'll never remember. So, all right, got that undone. Here. Don't want to scratch the paint on the dash. The dash is still in nice shape. Is it perfect? No. It's not perfect. Is it nice? Yeah. Nice enough. The interior in here is real nice. The only thing that scares me now, just with the heat down here, is this vinyl on the seats. It was done. There ain't a rip or a tear or a hole or a nothing in it. But it was done. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, and it just feels a little, it doesn't feel as supple. I don't know if it was like, I don't remember it being like that or not. I don't, I don't remember. But I'll tell you this, it just scares me with the heat that we're gonna start having problems with the seats ripping. Hopefully not. 16, 16, thank God, it's worth, no, no. Is it? Yes, yes it is. Nine sixteenths. That clip. Has to come up with a screwdriver, give it a little oomphity oomph. Purple on the far left, blue is second from the far left. Oh, there's that. I think this is the horn. I was gonna say, it should just pull out. Just been in there a while, all right. piece this is gonna break yeah. well we got room to get everything good okay and I just started star washer in there hey
And I'm thinking that's a... When I took the wrong one off down there, I did, didn't I? Well, I'll be damned. I took the wrong one off, y'all. All right, we're coming down. Okay. I'm gonna take it all the way down just yet, cause, because, 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 I gotta get that steering wheel off. Might need to go borrow a steering wheel puller. I wonder if my neighbors got one. They might. I'll be back. A few moments later. Well, as I went around asking everybody, like the two different mechanics over there next door, if they had a steering wheel puller, because, you know, you have to, these ain't equal. And the balancer ones, for some reason, just don't, they don't line up centered to give this one a good enough tug. I've used them all the time, and but a, a tough one, and I don't know, this might not even be a tough one. We'll see. But the one on my dad's 55 Nomad was a tough one. And I got it, but I said, screw that. And I totally forgot <laughs> that I went and bought one. <laughs> so I got a little loose, it's three quarter nut. Three quarter, knocked it loose, it's loose. And what I want to do first before we do anything, oh, you know what? This is going to come off without the damn, without the dang uh, puller. Didn't even need to bother. I can tell already. So you don't whack yourself in the face. I just did that the first time, but you know, nobody said I was smart. Leave it on a couple of threads. There's enough room. See that? And that way it doesn't fly off and hit you in the face. It's already loose. Huh. Wow, and that's something. For my own reference, again, and so you can see it, this spring goes in there. For any of the other guys looking for a view inside the column. Okay, so this all the way through to the steering box is one piece. So I'm gonna keep that for now. Let's get a good look at that because that even looks like the one that goes under the horn. It's very similar. So I'm gonna keep that out of the horn. And yeah, see? See this whole thing's moving? I should be able to pull this up and out and off of this. This is part of the horn ground, I believe. We're gonna go for it. That's how I roll. So You can see that in there. Can see it back there. Flashlight the camera with one hand. This piece here. So I'm just trying to get it out. The, the right side there is stuck on a couple of, between the two studs. So that's what I need to fish out with two hands. There it comes. All right. So you see it. So that goes up sits on this like that. This goes in first on the studs. And then this comes on. Make sure this is around. Now the fun part. Feeding the part behind the firewall through to here. All right, so problem is I gotta get that bracket off somehow. Came out easier on my brothers, my dads, because the shaft was cut, right? And because that shaft was cut, 
down by the box, I could move the bag, the bottom end up and down. Right now I can't because it's this is, it's, well, see it? It's stuck in there. And I can't get that bracket twisted and bent and come through that hole with ease like I did my dad's because this is keeping it from doing any of this. So my next try is going to be, let's try to take the bracket off. That will be what we get after next. Good times. All right, me after it. We're gonna loosen that up and try to finagle it around all this stuff. The more I look at it, there isn't enough room. If I loosen that up, get it around that. Which means that would have to come off. And then maybe. So I mean, there's more to it than just loosening this up, especially in the vehicle. The more I think about it, it's pretty tight in there. I don't know, I'm looking at this again. I'm thinking, take that off. Anyways, it's gotta come off no matter what. I work at that today. And then, it's only they're carriage bolts that go through the frame, so it's just those three there. Nuts on that side, you can see them. Maybe I can wiggle this column enough to get it out and see if I can somehow finagle that gearbox around this exhaust um, and out through this hole here and then slide it down out slide it down out from under the column and the column just falls on the floor inside the car funny thing is no matter how much I look online there's no information on how to get one of these out I'm just wondering how they did it at the dealership you know you take it back to the dealership and if this had to be done back in the 50s early 60s because they needed to replace the gearbox how did they do it I'd like to see a system on that and what the system was I know part of the problem is the manifolds that are on here right now are not the right manifolds for a 55 Chevy um, they dump in the middle similar to this they dump in the middle right where in 55 they dumped back here. And that would be out of the way for the gearbox to drop out. I say 55, 55, 56, whatever. They were all the same. They all dumped out the back. Um, some dumped out the front, actually. I don't know what year that was. Where they actually, uh, this side, dumped out the front of the block and then went down and under and over to the other side, which was here and met and then the exhaust went down so they'd come out here it would come over here meet up with that and then you know single exhaust all the way out the back seen that too so i don't know i don't know which years did which but the center dump might be an issue with the getting that gearbox out i just wish i mean i really don't need to save this i said earlier that i want to do it for my own personal curiosity on how it was done um, but I'm getting to a point where I don't care. <laughs> uh, I'm sick of thinking about it. I just wish there was a better way to get something in here to cut that. You just zip through it. It's just not a lot of room with all the stuff in the way. Hindsight's always 2020, you know. I, I really thought that that couple of things I fixed on the steering was going to help the non-power steering aspect of this be safer to drive. So I was saving money until a later date to do the power steering upgrade. You know, knowing what I know now, I wish I would have done the power steering first and then the brakes. Cause then I could have just, I could have just cut it out without issue when all the brake master and all that stuff was out. I might just have to pull the master cylinder out and uh, disconnect the lines and just re-bleed the system, I guess. That might be an option too. All right, let me think this through. All right, well, that's my cordless. I had to twist it and do whatever to get her down in there. And I can just barely get on it. I'm gonna have to do some weird finagling to uh, 
keep it from hitting the fire or, or keep it from bouncing and hitting the inner fender well. I don't know if I'll have enough pressure to be able to cut all the way through, but we're going to give that a whirl. And I can't put a camera anywhere near it, so I'll, uh... <laughs> For one, I don't know which way the sparks are going to go, and I can't put it there because you're in my line of sight. <laughs> Um, and that's the only place I can see what I'm doing. So I've got to reach over to grab it from this side of the fender and be able to see what I'm doing. <laughs> it's not ideal, but might have to work. I don't know if there's another place I can put you that you guys can see it. Yeah, it's probably the best I can do for you guys. I don't even know how I'm gonna get my finger on the trigger. Oh crap, that's not even on the rod. It's still the housing sitting on the dang housing. And if I go in the other way, the housing hits this column. Is my wheel wore down quite a ways? But I'm not able to get past that. I was just checking to see if my disc is maybe wore down, but I just put a brand new one on there and it's the same height. But maybe it's worn down just enough, but even so, it's not gonna let me get through it. I need a bigger one. These are four inch, four and a half. Oh, I need a five and a half. I don't have five and a half. In there that way. Let's try to go in, turn the other way. I tried that before and it didn't really look like it was, something was hitting, it wasn't. Uh, body hits the because that would work but the body hits the booster I need to get the booster off which entails taking off the linkage from the pedal I mean basically this whole damn thing's got to come out I spend a lot of time trying not to redo crap mainly because it's gonna make a stinking mess Unhooking the lines, brake fluid everywhere, all to spend 30 seconds cutting that damn rod, put it all back together, clean up the mess, bleed the, all the brakes again. I mean, that's a lot of crap just for that. That's frustrating. I don't know what my other option is at this point. My only option might be to, to do that. I'm trying to think of what other... Can I get a Sawzall in there? I don't think there's room to get a Sawzall in there either. It was easy, everyone would be doing it. Hell, obviously I'm not doing it. I mean, <laughs> oh, I call this hot rod, no. Better rename it. Well, I'm gonna attempt to uh, stick a bunch of those tools from underneath and see what we can do. take that out which is this rod that just keeps laying in here it's for the shift linkage for the column you gonna go up there now no because I like that ain't gonna do nothing
line ridiculous. This is getting borderline ridiculous. A few moments later. Nice having neighbors. Needed a five, one and five sixteenths. I had the bigger and the smaller, but didn't have this. Nice to have neighbors that are mechanicals. Mechanics. Mechanical. Mechanics. That's it. Good mechanics next door. Just like that. Now what? Like 68 years since these have been out. We're just gonna see what happens. Maybe it'll fall right out. Fall down, slide right out. Maybe. Out, out, out. And those are the carriage bolts heads. Out. Nothing holding it in, except for the column. <laughs> Nothing holding it in, but it's probably, you know, like right there, it's sitting on the frame up there, and that column. Oh, I'll get a pry bar. All right, it's just sitting there. Okay. It's got to come out from under. All right. It's so exciting that we're so close. But yet so far away. Two thousand years later. Alright guys, I couldn't get the camera down in there to see worth a crap, so I'll talk you through what I did um, on this other, the other column, this is the same as what's in the car, this is what we're taking off, first took these off, this is just the detents for the shifter, the shifter goes out like that, park, neutral, so on and so forth, took those off. This whole clamp thing, it's got to be able to get off of here, and to get off of here, it's got to go around this, and it can't go around that. So take that off, and then this detent is on both sides, and get a fat pry bar in there, bend it so that it spreads this open. So this gets spread open. So I bent this one back, bent this one back. And it was just enough to get around because you have to get around this and the flat side over here so i was able to get around that but then you have three bolts holding this collar in i took two of the bolts out 
On the 55 here, it's 7 sixteenths. On my 56 there, it's a half inch, these bolts. They must have upgraded them. Then this can slide down past the lever, then slide over one of these bolts, and now it's sitting, this is sitting off of this. Now I can try to pull this out of the car. This would be a lot easier if I didn't have all my new, brand new brake stuff in. So, kind of frustrating. Thinking it through, trying not to make a mess, trying not to do something in a hurry that I'm gonna regret later, because now it's in a, it's a problem. So, all right, enough of me blathering on. Now I am gonna try to work that column out of the car. All right, meet you in the car. All right, guys, hopefully we got availability to see everything that's going on here. So technically, you should be able to slide all of this right up and out. Probably have to move over here to get it up and over my shoulder. Try not to get grease and gunk on everything. Let's just see. She's willing to come now. There you go, there's where the steering wheel goes. And the whole internal rod. I know this is I know this is a lot of <laughs> repeat information, especially for Tri-5 guys who have done this before or know about it. But you younger generation are first time Tri-5, first time classic car guys doing this. This is what I've been talking about. It is one large long bar. And everything we've been doing and fighting for is to get this out over that through the hole in the floor. That bracket had to come off. You have to feed this through because it was hitting the firewall. So you turn and twist and it comes out easy once you get all that stuff off. There you go. I got her out. See, it's a blue one now. That car used to be green. I'm finding a lot more of that green everywhere. I look, I'm gonna run over to uh, my brother's shop. I got a brand new one of these. I'm not sure if I got a new one of these. If not, I have to fish this out from up here and put it in the new one. Let me run over there and see what he's got. A few moments later. Blinker arm off first. You know what? I don't think that does. I think if I take this The shifter has to come out. I slid the boot over. Looks like the dowel pin, uh, not dowel pin, but a uh, spring pin has been walking its way out for a few years. So that helps, otherwise you just stick a punch or something on the other side and work it out one side or the other. That's got to come out. Eating its way through the, the rubber there. Because that goes through the housing and into, so that's that's one thing that does have to come out. So, all right. It came out easy enough, so. I'm trying to do this the least intrusive way possible. What I mean is, if you're disassembling this, there's a couple of different ways to do it. You can take all the guts out of here first. You usually do that if you're changing the switch for the blinker, which we kind of are. But I kind of want to leave it in, and I think it can finagle the housing. Well. Talking my way through this. Because I believe
There it comes. All right. So it is just those three springs. I don't know if I'm going to be able to leave this in there or not. Might have to cut the wires. I have the blinker switch. And by getting that out, I am able to get those wires out. So I can sit there. Six. Six. There is a cover down here. Keeps the wires from being pulled through. We're gonna need that on the other one anyway, so yeah, there's our horn. That's what this looks like up close. Okay. And then uh, this outer collar comes off. And these three screws are the three, these three holes are the three screw holes. That's one of them. It's the other one. Those screw into that. You can see this is free moving. There's little catches here. And that's what holds it all together once you hold it tight. So now that we're at this point, this will turn off of there. We can lift that out. I think there's a ring under it. Yep. Like a bearing. It's almost like a bearing because you're spinning stuff when you shift, it's moving back and forth. And that's that. This should now, see it? It's coming up. And I'm gonna need both hands because I gotta feed these wires out. This, now we're off. You can see where the wires come through. And that's where I'm gonna have to feed the new one, but does that somehow fit down and out with the switch? And I don't think so. So I don't need it. But see, I could sell this original column at the swap meet and get a few bucks for it. And I'll just have to buy new wiring. Why would you trust the old stuff, right? Snip it. Give myself some length. Switch falls out. And then I'll go ahead and remove these the proper way. Remember the colors, the way they go. And then I'll write next to it. Don't believe I need anything else from that. Fun part's going to be feeding that down there to that. First things first. That's a Dan Chuck part 1104. Brand of neutral safety. This has a hole right here, and this ring has a post. So I'm gonna say you just have to line that ring up with that post. I get to use this cool little tool. <laughs> oh, bought one of these years ago. It's still in the plastic. What is it? What is it? You say? 
it is a magnetizer and demagnetizer for screwdrivers or anything. Ain't that something. You could buy one of those nowadays. I think I bought it at a swap meet like 10 years ago or longer. Electrical tape. Just gonna lay this flat like a ribbon. It seems like that's how it needs to go through that hole. The other one was done that way, so that's what I'm gonna try to do and just tape it a couple different spots so they stay together. This goes back on, and this goes back on. Goes. Gotta line it up. I gotta put the pin back in, gotta feed this around that into all of these. One by one. Around that. A little easier to do when they're pliable. Nice and new like this one is. That old one was pretty stiff. Fiddly stuff. It's all little fiddly stuff. Just feeding the slack out of the way. <sighs> all right. Got her together. I'm getting away from all that clutter. Didn't realize the camera had shut off. Got her repinned. Got her cover on. Got her horn. That's new. Um. The only complaint I got is everything was a little off-center with the new column itself. It's all glue. But, got it in. I somehow lost <laughs> that. I got to dig around on the floor. Must have bumped it. Oh, I just found it. And because it was off-center, the middle part, because this outer hub straddles the inner shaft. And because that shaft was off center, I had a hard time lining up these screws, but I finally did get them. And this one's a hair off. I don't want to strip it. There it goes. And that all at once I got that centered, I think that pulled everything straight down the middle. Let's make sure it all feeds through there nice. Yeah, no problem. So that'll be the last thing. That we put in this is done ready to go whole point was just to make sure this was all going to work before i got too far ahead of myself it's all back together pretty decent 
this had been such a little bit of a nightmare that I kind of just wanted to make sure it was all worth it. <laughs> right? This is, God forbid, anything goes smooth. So that took longer than I thought. So that's all the time I got this week. Got to get this edited up and uh, put in. We will next time be finishing figuring out how to get that damn gearbox out. <laughs> um, who knew it'd be such a problem? Balls. And it's not so much that it's a problem because of the way the car is built. It's a problem because of the updates I did. I know I sound like a broken record, but I want you to know if you're working on an original one, if you're working on one that has the factory brakes in it, you're gonna be fine. It'd be a lot easier with all that stuff out of the way. But I did it to myself. I didn't think it through. And who would have thought that? There's just no information anywhere saying, hey, if you're updating you know, all your power steering and power brakes and stuff, do the power steering first. Well, I'm gonna be the first video to tell you, do your power steering first, <laughs> then do the power brakes. Um, it'll make your life a whole lot easier, especially if you're already planning on doing both. So thanks for stopping by, guys. Really do appreciate you. Um, if you can, like and subscribe. You know, hit that subscribe button. That's the one over a little further. That's the one right there. Yep. And then hit that like button in the middle. Um, it's going to help me grow. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, you'll be sure to be notified then if when the next video comes out. And uh, hopefully that one will be us finishing the install. And who knows, maybe even test driving it if the rain stops. It's been raining every day here. I don't know what it's like where you're from, but down here in Florida, it's more of rainy season this year than it's ever been. I don't really want to drive it. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I don't have the wipers hooked up to vacuum. It'd just be running a vacuum line, get the wipers. No reason to drive it in the rain though. But maybe we'll be able to squeeze in a quick, a quick drive on a day that we know we've got some time to, some time to spare before the rain comes. We'll see you in the next episode. Mad Rag Garage, I'm Corey, and don't forget, don't wait for your hot rod to be perfect to enjoy it. Do a little something, get it out. Drive it around, remind yourself why you like the car, figure out your next plan, get it in the shop, do the next part. All right guys, till next time, keep wrenching.